This is the longest cross-sea bridge in Southeast Asia commissioned by the Malaysian government to be built by a Chinese company. This grand project cost a total of 1.5 billion US dollars and took six years to complete and open to traffic. But you know what? This cross-sea bridge is not only the core transportation hub of Malaysia, but also a bold attempt in the history of bridge engineering. Because during its construction, Chinese engineers used rubber materials in bridge construction for the first time. But it's this material, seemingly unrelated to traditional bridge construction, that's garnering widespread attention. Some Indian media criticized China for cutting corners and predicted that the bridge may collapse within 10 years. So, why does China use rubber materials in bridge construction? How is this cross-sea bridge doing now? In recent years, with the increase in business activities, transportation problems between Penang and mainland Malaysia have begun to appear. For example, the width of the strait has expanded from the narrowest 3 kilometers to the widest 16 kilometers. This naturally formed barrier limits communication between the two places. In order to solve this traffic bottleneck, Malaysia made the decision to build the Penang Bridge in 1982. This bridge was open to traffic in 1985, with a total length of 8,320 meters. Its completion not only connected Penang and the Malay Peninsula, but also shortened the travel time of residents on both sides by two hours. But over time, the once smooth bridge has become increasingly congested due to increased commercial activity. In order to alleviate this pressure, Malaysia decided to build another bridge between Penang and Seberang Pere. Unfortunately, Malaysia has mainly focused on economic development in the past 20 years, resulting in relatively weak infrastructure and the inability to independently build large-scale projects such as bridges. Faced with this challenge, the Malaysian government wisely chose international cooperation. Among multiple potential partners, Malaysia finally chose China. This decision was based on the long-term friendly relations and solid foundation of cooperation between the two parties. For example, since 2008, Chinese companies have successfully constructed a number of major projects in Malaysia, including highways, railways, and ports. These projects have not only significantly improved Malaysia's infrastructure, but have also been highly praised by the local people. According to my research, the bridge built by Malaysia in cooperation with China is the Sultan Abdul Halim Bridge, also known as the Second Penang Bridge. It is located between Bata Mao in the southeast of Penang and Bata Kawan in Seberang Pere. It has a total length of 22.5 kilometers, of which the cross sea section is 16.5 kilometers long. It is the longest sea bridge in Southeast Asia. The entire project costs up to 4.6 billion Malaysian ringgit, equivalent to approximately 1.5 billion US dollars. The bridge began construction in November 2008 and was officially opened to traffic in March 2014. Although this majestic Penang second bridge has been successfully completed and opened to traffic, becoming an important channel connecting Penang and Seberang Pere, it encountered doubts and criticisms from Indian engineers during its construction. It went so far as to assert that China was cutting corners and even predicted that the bridge would collapse in just 10 years. What exactly is this matter about? It turns out that during the construction of the second Penang Bridge, Chinese engineers boldly innovated and used rubber materials in bridge construction for the first time. As we all know, rubber, as an organic polymer material, is exposed to sunlight, oxygen, moisture, and other natural environments for a long time. Rubber materials are prone to aging, leading to performance degradation, and may even harden, crack, become brittle, and other problems. What's more, rubber is a polymer material that is prone to thermal deformation. It is easy to soften or deform under high temperature conditions, thus affecting the overall structure and safety of the bridge. So why would Chinese engineers risk using such a controversial material? We all know that although Malaysia is not located at the junction of plates with frequent crustal movements, 
Its active geological environment still exposes it to the occasional threat of earthquakes. For example, in 2015, a magnitude 5.9 earthquake occurred in Sabah, and in 2018, a magnitude 5.2 earthquake occurred. Against this background, every construction and planning of a city must be done with great care, especially those huge projects that span the sea and connect two places. Imagine that if a cross-sea bridge connecting Penang and Sebarang Parade collapsed during an earthquake, it would not only cause huge economic losses, but also seriously threaten people's lives. So when the Malaysian government decided to partner with China to build this landmark bridge, they set out the requirement that the bridge must be able to withstand a magnitude 7 earthquake. To achieve this goal, Chinese engineers used advanced pile drivers to drive steel pipes deep into the ground to a depth of 120 meters. At the same time, in order to enhance the stability of the bridge, engineers also designed steel casings as load-bearing piles. A total of 5,168 such pile foundations were used on the Penang Second Bridge. But relying on these alone is not enough. In order to prevent the bridge from shaking violently during strong earthquakes, engineers cleverly used highly elastic rubber materials to make high-damping rubber isolation bearings. This type of bearing can effectively isolate vibrations caused by earthquakes and play a buffering role when the bridge is impacted. This technology has been widely used in many new bridges and buildings in China. For example, the rubber bearings used by the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge are the largest in the world reaching an astonishing 1.77 meters times 1.77 meters. It is precisely with such technology and guarantee that the Penang Second Bridge can withstand earthquakes of up to 7.5 magnitude, which is enough to cope with rare natural disasters in Malaysia. As far as I know, one year after the Penang Second Bridge was open to traffic, the vehicle traffic reached 6 million, with an average of about 12,000 vehicles traveling on the bridge every day. During peak traffic hours, this number rises to an astonishing 20,000 times. The second Penang Bridge not only performs well in terms of functionality, but also subtly incorporates Malaysian cultural elements. High pole street lights are installed at certain distances on the bridge to provide sufficient lighting for night driving. The LED landscape lighting installed on the bridge deck makes the bridge shine at night, making it one of Malaysia's landmark buildings, attracting millions of tourists every year. It is worth mentioning that there have been no accidents on the Penang Second Bridge since it was open to traffic. In stark contrast, many bridges built in India in recent years have frequently collapsed. This is undoubtedly a powerful rebuttal to those doubters. Therefore, soon after the second Penang Bridge was completed, the Maldives sought cooperation with China and built the China-Maldives Friendship Bridge. Construction of the bridge officially started on December 30, 2015, and was fully completed and open to traffic in 2018. The opening of the China-Maldives Friendship Bridge has reduced residents' commuting time from more than 20 minutes to just 5 minutes. At the same time, the bridge has also become a new landmark of the Maldives, attracting tens of millions of tourists for sightseeing and bringing new opportunities to the development of local tourism.